Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Fan Man, and today it gives me great pleasure to show you demonstrations of how to use the UV visible spectrophotometer double beam. And with me today, we have a very brilliant student, Benjamin. Hi! Who's filming with me. Now, before we start any experiment on the lab, you need to have your PPE on. Benjamin, what is PPE? Personal protective equipment. And that consists of? Your gloves, your lab coat, make sure you have covered shoes, long pants, socks. Yes, it covers all your skin. So, we proceed to wear the gloves. Make sure that the gloves right fits you and give you good dexterity. If your hands are a bit small, make sure you wrap the small size or medium size so that your hands are more constrained by the glove size. Okay, or too tight. Too this is not good, this is just nice. And next, we put on our goggles. Photometer double beam. So this model here is called UV dash eighteen hundred Shimatsu. Right, but there's other variable, other brands. So the first thing you do is right, make sure the main switch is on, which is right here. It's already on. And normally when you have a UV, this spectrophotometer is connected to a desktop, and you make sure that was working as well. So first thing is you need to look for the switch. Now before you touch any of the instrument here, you have to make sure that your glove is off so that the, no chemicals are on the surface. So the on button is right here. Hear the sound? Then the light comes up and you wait for a while for it to load. Okay. At the same time, you will have turned on the PC. Right. So let's open up the program, Benjamin. It's UV Probe 2.70, right? Yep. Okay. And you see this popping up. Okay, it's loading, and now we turn it back to the UV spectrophotometer. You see, now it comes up. You see that there's an LCD screen on the whole device itself, so technically you can just adjust all the setting, baseline, scan, right, and do a printout in the printer here. But for the purpose of this video, we can also link it to a PC that's easier for our movement, for the setting. So to do that, we can press the button, right, Ben? Yes, but we have to wait for the initialization to complete. All right, we have to wait for the initialization to complete. Make sure you see that it's OK, 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 and after a while, it will be OK. Now, one key thing to maintain the UV V special photometer is we try not to turn it on and off, right? Um, for many times, because right, the light, there's a lamp here and it has the longevity. Right, and we turn it too many times, it will spoil. And to reduce the ease of defect, we will turn it on maybe once or twice a day. Okay, use okay so this is the interface on your screen here, of the software. So first you need to connect, and then you see the start. After that, first click on this icon. It's called M, stands for method, right? So under the method, you will adjust what are the wavelength that you scan your sample. And of course, you can select the the speed of scan, right here we choose very fast. You can also select the repetitions in the scan mode, the time interval, and change the file name where you want to save your files. So, here we go. So now this part is about sample preparation. Remember you had your PPE on, and because this time is COVID, you could have your mask on as well. So I'm going to put on my mask. <laughs> really, putting on the mask. And here we start. Now, what you see in front of me are a few kinds of instrument um, apparatus we need for UV spectrophotometer. Now you see that you need to have your DI water with the bottle. These are the beakers for the waste solution to prepare. Here's the sample solution, right? And you see that's colored. For this case, Kim White, make sure you need to wipe off uh, the surface of the cuvette later on uh, and also the surrounding. And it's always good to have a big piece of paper here in case you know, it's uh, not clean. Now, in front of you, you also see the two plastic pipettes. One is for the sample, one is for the blank. Blank is the solvent here, in this case it's water. right? Even though it's water-based uh, experiment, you should wear glove for safety reasons. Next, you also have a secondary container. If you want to be more careful, we can always put a chemical inside, right, to be secure. Now in front of me, you see that there's some cuvettes, and do not be mistaken, they are quite different. 
So on the right hand side, this is a plastic cuvette. And how you can tell it's a plastic cuvette, you can either hold it, it's a bit lighter, but uh, if you want to compare whether it's glass, quartz or plastic, you might want to use some other instrument, like seeing the refractive index. Now, here, this plastic cuvette, you notice there's the aperture here. It's for small volume in case you don't have so much sample. Here you see there's the narrowing of the, the channel so that you can raise it a bit and the light can still go through and scan your sample. However, if you have a lot of sample, like in our case, right, we are privileged, then we can use an ordinary cuvette here. Okay, so you see the cuvette. Every cuvette has two sides. It has two sides. Even if it's dust, which is indicated by the G. You see this? G means glass, right? Expensive, but very fragile, so don't break it. You have the caps for the cuvette, right? You also have the quartz over here, the quartz cuvette, right? very solid, you see? Now, in every cuvette, glass, quartz, or plastic, you've got two parallel sides. You see the side that's more, you know, less transparent? You've got the transparent. Later on, I'll show you, you've got to pay attention to these two sides, okay? Always hold the cuvette on a side that's not transparent, translucent side. So you always see the transparent side. Okay. Take note, there are three kinds of materials. Look at them carefully. You have the quartz, glass, and the plastic. Step one, we prepare the blank sample. Now, blank, some students always talk about, it's nothing, right? No, blank means you have something, but merely your original solvent. In this case, it's water. So this has been cleaned before. What you do is you take a bottle and make sure Add the liquid carefully, not too full, you know that it is the right amount. Okay, that's all. Okay. Make sure you put on the cap. Okay. Now, do you see where my fingers are? You might not notice, but it's always holding the side that's not transparent, so you can see that it's very clear here. Good. Put it here. Okay. Be very careful. <laughs> Mix, okay, no time. Okay. Why is that so? Right, because we want to make sure that it is adjusted to the baseline, that our sample and our blank restart from the same standard, which is just the pure solvent. Close it. Here it is. Okay. So now let's proceed to the spectrophotometer, shall we? Okay, good. There you are. So, over here. Now, once again, before you touch the photometer, you to remove your gloves. So, I'm going to remove right hand. This is the sample cover. Open it. All right. You notice that there are two, two holders here, one for each cuvette. One's a sample holder, one is the blank. All right. So, Where you position the cuvette is extremely important. You notice that there is this light, right? Passes through from left to right, from west to east. So the transparent side should go in this direction. If you accidentally do it the other way, good luck to you. <laughs> then your light won't be detected, okay? At the same time, before you put in, always check if there's any bubbles. If there's any bubbles here, pop it out because it may cause the direction of light, diffraction. Put it in, make sure it's all the way in. Once you're done, close the cover. Okay, next, you proceed to the desktop. So once you've reached the desktop, just press the baseline button to do a baseline scan. So after the wavelength, they will want to double confirm your wavelength after setting. It's okay. Okay, so now we prepare the sample for the cuvette scan. So again, make sure no glove is on, remove it. Okay, here is where the sample is. Close. Right. Take it to the side. Right. Now you notice that right here, we have water as our solvent. So now we're going to remove it into the waste beaker. So take it aside. Pour it. Right. Okay. Now, this is your sample. 
So make sure you have a piece of pipette over here to transfer your solvent from a volumetric flask. Okay. First, we're going to wash and clean it with our sample in case it gets a bit diluted. Remember, it was wet before, so there might be remnants of the initial solvent there. Okay. So what I do is, we fill it a bit fuller, okay? Put on the cap, right? And rinse it. Rinse it, okay? Pour it back. Good. Then next, you would top it up with your sample. This time round, again, make sure there's no air bubbles. That's very crucial. Number one, no air bubbles. If you do, tap the side of the wall of the cuvette. Okay, just right. Okay. Another thing to pay attention is when you see the cuvette inside there's some solid, make sure that that sample can't be used because you will have some kind of diffraction of the ray and then you do have to do filtration before doing that. Put back the cuvette cap, right? Do we proceed from now? Not yet. The side of the cuvette might be wet. Take a few Kim wipes and make sure that the transparent side is really dry. Okay, now we're good to go. Come. Sample holder, the cuvette, right? Make sure your glove doesn't touch the surface. Transparent side, <laughs> facing west to east. Close, and let's do a scan. Now to do a scan, let's go back to the computer interface. Make sure you click start. Here your window pops out. This is where you set your file name and where you want to save your file, which folder. And voila, now it's scanning. Do you have some patience? Now we are doing some fast forward times 20. So be patient. After doing so, the scan is up. You click on this icon called peak picking. And this is where your peak signal data pops up on the left in this table. Right now we have a very simple spectra of a sample. Uh, but normally you might see more than one peak. The lambda max is shown. So next step, you go to print. Right, we print out this spectra and you can go on and analyze it. But here's a challenge for you. What is this sample here? So leave your answers in the comment section below.